Yeah, I think I am a little bit known for um, being on the louder side. Uh, and Adam and Luke definitely know that really well, being on a team with them internationally. And um, that's definitely my specialty in a lot of ways. So I definitely want to be as enth enthusiastic as them. And I know the energy that Adam has to his craft is something that I look up to in so many ways. And so to be able to even learn from him as giving to all of the kids, anything that I have, I will be on the enthusiastic side, that's for sure. <laughs> Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host Scott and back with me again is my co-host Dan. And with more big news coming out of the AP Race Club, we've got another exclusive interview explaining all for our listeners. Yeah, another great episode for you all, which of course is very exciting. I'm very much looking forward to this chat to see how things at AP are doing. And also very happy to share with you all, if you don't know already, the newest AP athlete. Yes, so please welcome back onto the podcast AP Managing Director Ed Baxter and the newest AP athlete all the way from Canada, technically in France right now, Sydney Pickram. <laughs> thank you both for joining us. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I was, I was waiting for ladies first. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all good. Yeah, thanks for having us back on, guys. Looking forward to it. So a little bit different from the last time we spoke AP in the sense that the announcement has already been made. It's all official. So we don't have to do kind of the staged reveal that we did last time. So we're, we're trying to have a conversation with you both kind of flowing through the topics a little bit, unlike we did for Luke. But if there is a pause like we just had, I will direct a question to either one of you. Um, to kick things off, Sydney, a massive congratulations on becoming the newest AP athlete. What does it mean to be part of the AP team? Uh, thank you so much. Um, it means a lot. This is such a cool opportunity. I think the outlook that AP has on swimming in general and um, what they strive to have in the future and everything uh, makes me super excited. And to be the first female in this role, um, I'm truly, truly honored and international. And I think it just shows how far this brand's going to go. And so I just feel really honored to be the newest AP athlete. How did it come about? Was it Ed or Adam approaching you to be part of the team the other way around? How did, how did we get to this point? Yeah, so it really came fully through Ed. Um, I've worked with Adam through ISL and London Roar. We've done a lot together in kind of the leadership standpoint. Um, but really, it came from Ed. And I think he just explained to me what AP really means and what this brand strives to do in the um, outlook that they have in swimming uh, just really was exciting for me. And I honestly had no arguments by any means. I was just like, yeah, if we make this happen, I will be super excited. So if you take a chance on me, I would be truly honored. And that's kind of how it came about. So Ed, why was Sydney the right choice to grow the team with? Um, I, th I think like Sydney said there, we've got quite a a specific outlook on the sport and, and where we want to take the sport. I think from what we've talked about before, guys, you know, you know, we're very, you know, passionate about swimming not being seen as a, a boring sport where you follow the black line and, and don't have too much personality. Um, I think what we always try and do is is help people get their personalities out in swimming. You know, make swimming a, a cool sport, make it as engaging as possible. Um, and I think from anything anyone's seen of Sydney before, or hopefully what they see of her at our events, she'll. Um, she'll show that that's that's exactly who she is she's you know she's very loud she's very confident within the sport and you know the sport needs more people like that so i think you know helping you know give a platform to people like that is what the sport needs so it was it was a very natural natural um partnership i guess was it always a plan to grow the team with athletes outside of gb uh yes for sure 100 percent. uh not this soon <laughs> um, <laughs> i remember when we were when we were talking um, to Luke on his podcast last time, we were already talking to Sydney, um, mm. and it was um, you know, we definitely knew we wanted you know a female to come into the next role, but we really didn't know who. Um, so when we you know kind of really progressed talking to Sydney, um, and like she said, you know, shared the ideas, the vision, um, and she was really on board. You know, it just kind of fell naturally, like we said. But um, international was always a thing, but it was never never meant to be within this uh, year or so of, of <laughs> well six months of, of having that. <laughs> 
So Sydney, what sort of things are you most looking forward to doing as part of AP? Um, I think just the diversity in general that this brand has, I think with the personalities like me, Adam and Luke and working with the team, um, I think just how there's so many avenues that we can reach. And I think that's what AP has done in the clinics. It's not just your standard type of clinic that we run. And so when I looked at the different outlooks that they were providing for people and um, exactly what they wanted to give their clientele and the swimmers and really change the game of swimming. Um, I think just the variety that we add is something that I look forward to. And again, how we said like the energy, it really is a tight knit team. And that energy is, um, I would say, really delivered to each and every person. And so I just feel so excited to be part of the team and looked at as the same energy level with them. Well, Luke Greenbank has just done his first AP race clinics doing backstroke. Are you most looking forward to doing that yourself? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't wait to have my own clinic for sure. Um, I think, thankfully with I am, I have diversity in every stroke, uh, which I'm glad I can put that forward. Obviously, they really cover backstroke and breaststroke really well. Um, but yeah, I definitely can't wait to meet the kids and just... I don't know work with the team it really is so exciting it is like a family and so i can't wait for that Ed, does this mean you as a team are foraying into an international race clinic like maybe in canada take the team abroad or is this more of a chance for the swimmers in britain to get an experience from an international athlete abroad that they previously would never have been exposed to um, I think that's definitely a bit more Ed question of uh, yes. how where they want to take it. But obviously, I'm excited to bring what I have to offer over to GB and everything. Um, but yeah, I would never be opposed to it, of course. <laughs> yeah, so um, ov obviously we will hope to go abroad, abroad sometime. In 2020, we actually had, I think, 30 international clinics planned. We were going, we weren't actually doing Canada. We were doing America, Asia and Europe. Um, obviously they were cancelled but the plan is definitely to go international at some stage but I think that's what um, what you mentioned there Scott it's about you know giving people in the UK first of all an opportunity to you know see something different um, you know Canadian swimming's in probably its strongest point ever I would say so being able to bring a different culture into the UK see you know get kids learning from you know different cultures different programs around the world and, and kind of different mentalities you know Luke approaches things completely different to the way Adam does completely different know to the way Sydney does doesn't mean they're not all Olympic medalists so I think um, you know for sure it's definitely hopefully going to go international one day but at the minute it's it's about you know providing the people in our country with with the best opportunities and experiences possible I think mm. yeah I mean you've, you've just announced the ultimate race clinic I mean we've what we've seen hopefully everyone else has seen that it's towards the end of the year at the London Aquatic Centre what why should people be excited about it well, that is something we've been going on for a long time now. <laughs> we've been trying to work with the London Aquatic Centre for nearly two years now. Um, so it's taken two years to get to this point, and you know that's that's really exciting that we can go there because I think you know we've got three events planned with them. One of which, obviously, we know is an ultimate race clinic. Two of which aren't announced yet, uh, but we're super excited for all of those. But um, so that is, you know, that clinic is all about learning how to perform in front of an Olympic crowd. Um, that's going to be you know, a swim session, really intense psychology session, really intense lunch session. You know, it's not the hour and a half we usually do um, on each station where you learn a lot and you, you stop and you talk about things. It is really intense. You're going to go out now and you're going to perform and you're going to win. Um, and then each each uh, person who's on the clinic is going to get the opportunity to walk out in front of a, our Olympic crowd. You know, we're going to have the, the stands filled. We're going to have a pretty special entrance. Um, I've been on the phone today to the people who are going to create the entrance and it's going to cost a lot of money <laughs> but um, we're going to create a really really amazing experience because um, I think it's you know it's so rare that anyone gets to experience something like that you know even if you race at you know a British championships or you know some lower level international meets they they don't put money into production and you know venue dressing and stuff like that so you know the chance of anyone reaching that level is 0.0001% anyway so if we can give that experience that everyone is aiming for to the younger generation of swimmers, I think that's something really special. And obviously we've got a pretty exciting team with, with three Olympic medalists and also everyone else we, we currently work with. Yeah, so Sydney is going to be part of that team. So Sydney, what excites you about being part of an event like that? 
Uh, I mean, I'm so excited. Even I remember when I first stepped foot in the 2012 pool was uh, one of our first, one of our matches in ISL. And I remember just being like shell shocked of how amazing it was and just the atmosphere that it had. And I was, couldn't believe all of those moments in 2012 that I got to be in that pool. So I can't wait to give that experience as much as I can to the kids and um, for them to kind of have that environment and then also just learn so much. Like even I being there, I felt like I learned so much, let alone getting to have Olympic medalists and show them the ropes and the AP team. Uh, I can't wait for the clinic. What do you reckon you're going to bring to the table? Because we've all seen Adam basically shouting at these kids. We've just seen Luke do it. Are you going to be just as loud and enthusiastic as, the, as these two? Yeah, I think I am a little bit known for um, being on the louder side. Uh, and Adam and Luke definitely know that really well, being on a team with them internationally. And um, that's definitely my specialty in a lot of ways. So I definitely want to be as enth enthusiastic as them and, I know the energy that Adam has to his craft is something that I look up to in so many ways. And so to be able to even learn from him as giving to all of the kids anything that I have, I will be on the enthusiastic side, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Edo, I'm, I'm right in thinking that almost the selection criteria of being an AP athlete is the enthusiasm <laughs> that Sydney is going to bring to the table. Yes, 100%. As Like I said, you know, it's about energy. It's about what you make the sport. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's a shame that such an amazing sport is, you know, ran in such an unprofessional and traditional way. I think if you look mm -hmm. at, you know, I was watching something the other day and sent it to some people we work with, how far even Formula One is ahead of even football in terms of the commercial aspect of it and how exciting they make those events. And you know, I was watching it and um, the, the, the drivers are up until midnight the day before a race with their commercial, you know, obligations and things they need to do because that creates such an amazing show the next day it, it puts the, the hundreds of millions billions into the sport that makes it so good because it's so professional you know like i said i think that's it's even miles ahead of football so you know when we're trying to take swimming from you know you, your general counties that you you remember racing at um you know all those years ago you know i think trying to to push it into that professional professional state and give people an experience of a professional sport and something that is more glamorized and, and made more exciting is, is really important because like I said I think we probably put more time and effort and, and energy into swimming than 99% of sports so mm. you know why should ours be the one that is, is stuck in the dark ages. And it's about giving these these youngsters almost a new benchmark of what a meet should be so that come the future that's the next generation who are expecting this experience like open meets and they're the ones who can change it in the future when people like me and you aren't around. Exactly, yeah. And I think, um, you know, that's the same thing as we talked about before. People don't get to race at a competition where they have an amazing crowd and amazing entrance and, you know, things like that. But there's no reason that they don't get that. It's just the way it's always been done. So, you know, I think it, it takes something, you know, it takes a while and it takes, you know, an organisation, hopefully like ourselves, to be able to change things like that. But we can't do that without people like Luke, people like Adam, people like Sydney, who are, you know, at the top of the sport with a huge amount of influence saying, this is where the sport needs to go. We support this and we want to be a part of that. Um, and that's why obviously we're very grateful to, to work with the people we do. Um, but yeah, it's something needs to move forward, doesn't it? Well, we're sold. How can other people find more or even sign up to this Ultimate Race Clinic? Uh, Clinics.aprace.club is where they can sign up. I, I think that's the right URL. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the link description. Um, Sydney was being yeah. able was being able to help the experience of young swimmers in the sport a driving force with you joining this program. Oh, for sure. I think I look at even as I've looked at my career and kind of how much it's changed. Even for me, I look almost in Olympic cycles, and I remember kind of post Rio and evaluating where I was and the little amount of international connections that I had coming out of Rio compared to now, and mm. obviously being super grateful that I get to be in a brand like this that is reaching international um, bounds. And so I think it just was crazy how much that the sport has changed, even for me throughout the time period that I've been in it, which in a grand scheme of things, isn't that long and hopefully can go for a while longer. Um, but I think just the fact that it's changed so much for me and, uh, I think the plans that AP have talked about, it, it is really kind of mind blowing how simple sometimes uh, what Ed has said and had planned. I'm like, why has this not 
been done already. And mm. I think the fact that like this time period that I've been in has changed so much. I think there is still so much change that even we can do as a brand in almost a short period of time. But um, I think being able to give that to that younger generation is exactly why AP is the way that it is and why I'm so happy to be part of the brand. I think um, I think the reason as well why you know people like Sydney and, and Luke and Adam and everyone that works with us is so passionate about making this change as well is because we've experienced it and been through it and you know what I was I was talking to some people the other day um, and they said why do we do this what's what's the the point of it um, and you know you know as you were younger you know swimming is often the thing that is is there for you is the thing that you rely on you know if you don't have a great time at school people a lot you know have a great time at swimming or you know, you might not have a great time with your family, or, but you have an amazing time swimming. And I think, you know, as a as someone who's you know still involved in swimming now, and all the people we work with, we're doing it because also the younger versions of myself would have loved that. You know, mm. why would we not have want to go to these events that we're hosting? Why would we not want to, you know, be able to go to a competition where it's really exciting? Not even if you're not swimming at it. Why can't you watch one in the UK that is an amazing standard? That's an amazing show. There isn't one. There's not a single swimming competition in the UK. That is a spectator event. Why is that? Why is that? That needs to change. So, I think one of the reasons why we're doing a good job, hopefully, is because people like myself, Luke, Sydney, Adam, all the people we work with, have been through that and want to provide that for the younger versions of ourselves. I guess. Mm. Yeah. We've spoke, I've spoken a lot on this podcast about how much I like darts and how much of a show and entertainment it is. I mean, if you can do something along those sort of lines with amazing walk-ons <laughs> and you know fireworks going everywhere, that'd be that'd be awesome. That'd be that'd be insane. <laughs> well, the, the flame burst we were talking about today was six meters high, so uh, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we're going to make it pretty special. Oh. Wow. Sydney, while we have you, it's worth touching upon this summer and the Commonwealth Games that are coming up, because we know over here it's the biggest meet, it is the target meet for all the home nations. How big of a deal is it for over in Canada? Uh, I mean, it's a huge deal. I definitely didn't think that Birmingham Airport would be like my top airport this year. It's already going to be the <laughs> third time I'm flying into it. Um, and But I, I'm really excited. You know, we definitely take it seriously. And it was actually my first senior national team was back in 2014 in Glasgow. And um, I, unfortunately, because of school at the time, I wasn't able to participate in 2018. And the amount of memories that my teammates talk about 2018 Commonwealth Games, I mm. definitely have had the FOMO. Um, so I'm very excited to uh, go to this Commonwealth Games. And yeah, I mean, we definitely take it seriously. It's a big summer, I think, after the little bit of the summer that we kind of, uh, we didn't really have for a while. Um, so I I'm excited for it. I think it is a really cool concept, and I'm glad that Canada is a part of it. Um, and again, like kind of being in a game center where you are with your country of people, not just in swimming and other sports, and having that uh, game setting is really exciting. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, it's interesting because James Wilby said that that was his one of his favourite meets, wasn't it? Commies 2018 being part mm. of Team England. So there's obviously a different sort of vibe at Commonwealth Games. Um, Sydney, what's what's your racing goals? What are your targets? Um, obviously, I have not been a Commonwealth champion. That's going to be something that's on my radar and would love to achieve. Um, but again, I think I've been in this kind of path with swimming of figuring out exactly what works best for me and what is making me happier. And I think being part of this brand and how things are working towards is definitely something that has helped me in this position of almost having that value in swimming in so many different ways. And so I definitely want to put my best foot forward for the teams for the summer, for sure. And again, for repping AP, I'm super honored. And so um, I definitely have a lot of goals and best times is always what I like to strive for. And if I can swim my best and it gets me that place on the podium, then that's what I'm going to get. So, uh, yeah. That's some on point messaging and branding there. Edgy. Yeah. You, you, you've prepped, you've yeah, prepped that. her well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, um, that was really nice. I think um, that was really nice to be honest with me because it's, um, you know, I think swimming so often revolved around PBs, medals, you know, percentage improvement, season's best, everything like that. And, you know, I think when you, you know, speak to people when they've left the sport, it's often that that, that they don't remember, um, unless they've done something pretty monumental, um, like winning an Olympic medal or, or winning Olympics or world championships or something like that. But that's still one moment out of, you know, 20 years often in the sport. So it's um, it's good to hear that, you know, helping other people and you know 
being a part of a brand is also as much of a goal as actual personal achievement. That's um, that's for Sydney. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's her first bonus check written there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have guys, a script behind me. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's been it's been short. It's been sweet, but I'm really looking forward to seeing where this evolves. I know we're both hopefully on our way to the ultimate race clinic later on this summer to see how the partnership has evolved by then. Um, but before we finish up this podcast, Sydney, we do usually do some quick fire questions. Do you sound up for those? Okay. Yeah. As well, if my Wi-Fi connection allows me to be quick, I will be quick, <laughs> but I will answer the question. <laughs> That's fine. So, um, Sydney, what is your favorite event? 200 IM. Who is your swimming idol? I always look up to my coaches more than I look up to swimmers. Nice. Uh, what's your proudest moment in swimming so far? Um, definitely Olympic medal. What's the hardest set? <laughs> <laughs> what's your hardest set you've ever done in training? Um, always do a 10 day out set and it's basically a 400 IM set and it's broken 700 but basically all out and it is very painful and we try and see how high my lactate can go Ooh. Ooh, ow. yeah <laughs> I've one time hit 24 and it was so painful <laughs> um what's your pre-race song right now um I'm a big Eminem fan so definitely more old school rap is my thing Nice. Um, and final question. If you was to go on a road trip, there's three spaces in the car. Who would you take with you? Who would I take? Yeah, three spaces. You can take friends, family, or celebrities. Anyone. Can I take my dog as one? Yep, yep. Dogs are always welcome. Okay, dog one. I knew that one. would be the first answer. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit obsessed with my dog. Um, dog one. Hmm. Second would probably, I'd have to pick my mom. And if I'm doing a friend trip, Harriet would probably have to be one of them. Just go home nice. for the weekend, you're pretty much there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 oh guys both of you thank you so much for coming on to this week's episode of the propulsion swimming podcast it's always great to learn a little bit more about ap the brand who are really pushing swimming especially in this country um and i can't wait to speak to you all again very soon worries thanks for having us it's been good thank you so much yeah well i mean we're definitely going to be on our way to london if there's going to be six meter flames we're, we're going to be there <laughs> we're, we're, we're there <laughs> <laughs> So that just about rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. And me and Dan will be back in seven days' time. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.